Good morning, folks. And uh, this is a news item that I'm completely unfamiliar with. I think I saw it last week or the week before, and I just thought this was the most ridiculous thing. But apparently people are like, no, 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 this is still going on. And I'm like, oh, really? So apparently um, there's some professor who responded to some people who thought orcs in some fantasy context were black people or some persons of color or some historical examples of people of some denomination. And now this professor is being accused of slavery apologism and white supremacy. Now, I have no clue what slavery apologism is. I would imagine if someone did something bad, they'd have to apologize for it. So I don't know if, if slavery is still a thing these days, especially in the first world or North America, that you'd then have to apologize for that thing. But I highly doubt a professor at a university or a college who would actually be involved in slavery would then have to then apologize for it. It makes no sense. But what do I know of the, of the world these days? And of course, being accused of white supremacy as well. So Immediately, I'm thinking, okay, the possibility of someone being a slaver and someone being a white supremacist, you know, you start compounding things like, ah, probably not going to happen. You know, the more things you accuse someone else of, the less probability of those things occurring. So by virtue of this title, and and he, that he's arguing that <clears throat> a fantasy organization or group in fantasy fiction, are not racist. I can already guess the people who are accusing this man of what their disposition is, what their political standings are, what their intellect is like, what language they use, what they think of women, what they think of politics. I can already guess, just from the title alone, what this is going to be about. So let's get into it. Chris Ferguson, professor of psych at Stetson University authored a piece on psych psychology today where he argued that orcs are not racist. Um, I don't know why he'd have to do that. Maybe he's uh, maybe he's studied some aspects of of literature. Uh, I mean, he don't doesn't take much to figure out fictional characters aren't based off fictional th or real life things. So I don't see what the problem is. But again. People are stupid. You got to explain things to them so that they understand things. Now he's under attack from progressive elements of defending his view that the fictional race of orcs, as seen in popular games like Dungeons and Dragons, as well as most works of fantasy and literature, are not a racist concept. And even if they were a racist concept, so what? Even if they were a sexist concept or, or a horror, that, that is kind of why you want fiction to address those issues and address those topics. Why would you complain of things that you are strongly, say you're against slavery or racism or whatever have you, you would want those topics talked about or used as themes or used in dialogue or visually shown on the screen in a movie in your fiction. You would want that. You would say, hey, this is the thing I'm against. This movie is about the thing I dislike. We should watch that movie together, or we should read this book and learn and learn something, why it's so important. That would be the natural response from people who like or dislike something. They say, hey, look, this movie showcases the horrors of the thing I dislike, or showcases the beauty of the thing I like. That would be a healthy, normal response from someone who appreciates or respects the thing they hate or like or love. Simple, right? But no. Progressivists or progressive people think, oh, you can't, you can't even talk about that. That's horrible. Why would you ever do that? Like, it's just this bizarre world where uh, silence and suppression of information or topics of conversation cannot, cannot be addressed. And if you are, you are the thing itself, which is absolutely ridiculous. As if you're accusing an author like Tolkien of thinking that uh, orcs are racist or the writers and creators of D&D &D or any any fantasy uh, author who wants to take a little element from from yesteryear's, oh, I like this little bit from Tolkien, I like this little bit from Brooks, I like this little bit from the Conan writers. You know, it's, it's ridiculous. So there's last week elements of progressive nerd culture. 
I don't even know what that is. I don't even want to know what that is. Attempt to describe orcs as racist. Of course, why not? Why don't you describe elves as racist? Or, uh, or monarchal or um, supremacists or all sorts of other number of things. Who cares? They're fictional. Go, go crazy. We don't care. Go say, talk in whatever retarded circles you're in. I, it's not going to bother anyone. We're just going to laugh at you and actually show you the history of why orcs are the way they are. Why Tolkien made the orcs and the elves and the dwarves and all the others the way they are. Many call these elements out for what was an obvious projection, exactly, on their part for making such wild comparisons. Wild does not begin to describe the level of ridiculousness of these people. The doctor also responded to the description by writing an article in Psychology Today with the headline, No, Orcs Aren't Racist. The article goes on to break down the recent outrage about orcs stem from pointing to a comicbook.com article and a trending tweet. It goes on to point out three of the common arguments people were making in an attempt to paint orcs as racist. Again, we're talking about a fictional race of people or species of people who are pretty much seen as just opponents to overcome in Lord of the Rings. They're, I guess you could say if you want the theme of man versus technology or nature versus technology, the the elves and the humans and the dwarves are all sort of nature, Gandalf and Tom Bombadil and all those other guys, Father Christmas-like characters, nature and overcome technology, which the orcs represent. The orcs make weapons of war. They're born out of some sort of pools by Saruman. And it's sort of that, that's about as technological as they get. It's a fantasy world, so they can't go too far when you're talking about Middle Earth. The article goes down to break down where the recent outrage about orcs stem from pointing to come. Yeah, okay. Dr. Person then breaks down each argument pr proving why they don't work and don't make sense. He includes the, his article writing, no, orcs aren't racist and D&D &D isn't promoting racism. Which, I mean, e even if it was, even if, if you were having a campaign where you had a racist faction, it wouldn't be promoting it because you're playing a game. You're fighting against that organization. Or you could join that organization. It's called role-playing. It's fantasy. It's not real. Even if it was promoting something, it's not real. There's, there's no connection between fictional works and that influencing people in a large scale. Maybe the individual, maybe someone who's not too bright, Maybe someone who actually believes these things before they actually play these games or read these books would would then enforce their own opinion. Sure, that has happened. Individuals, exactly. You, you can't stop the individual. But as a whole, statistically speaking, no. There's no there's no great influx of racists who read Tolkien and go, Oh my god, the orcs are just like the Chinese, therefore I'm a racist bastard who hates the Chinese or some nonsense. There's no good scientific evidence to back up the claims in this new woke wave of moral out outrage and, and policing. Yeah, it's just outrage culture. I'm outraged that we have old white men on starships flying around the galaxy. Where are all the, the women of color or, or some nonsense? There are real issues around race and racial inequalities we need to work on in the U.S. and across the world. But as far as D&D &D goes, a fictional universe, let's try to tune out society's moral entrepreneurs as best we can and get back to gaming. So this professor of psychology is like, hey, just, just get back to the good stuff. Get back to why you play these games and read these books. So after publishing the art article, Dr. Ferguson was accused of being a slavery apologist. Again, that's not a thing. There's no such thing as apologizing for slavery. And a white supremacist by Monkey Monkey's Paw Games, Nicholas Masick, the official Swordsfall Twitter account. Oh, joy. Taking out time of a busy schedule of slavery apologism to talk about how orcs aren't racist. I'm glad all the white dude racism understanders, again, not a real thing, racism understanders, are these guys just inventing words to sound smart or are they just retarded? I'll let you think about that one for a few seconds. They have logged on to tell us about BIPOC. I, I don't know what racism is and how slavery worked. 
Wow, looking at what he retweets, what a shitty ass dude. I don't know what you mean, Brandon. He's obviously a well-respected psychologist and any retweets of white supremacist or white supremacist logic is clearly not an endorsement. So now we have flavors of logic based on white supremacism. I'm sure M- Mr. Monkeypaw here knows exactly what that is because I have no clue. And I don't know any white supremacists who think like, what do you even say? White, how many adjectives do you need there? White supremacist logic. Okay, fine. Just a regular dude, white dude with opinions about race. Okay, fine. When you're white, you can claim that those things don't matter. I forgot for a second the rule of white. Like, what? What's going on? Those are utterly vile, out-of-context smears against the doctor, I assume, from someone attempting to discredit his work. Professor Ferguson is not a Gamergate supporter. Again, Gamergate. We're still talking about Gamergate after all this time. I don't know why. Slavery apologist or advocate for spanking. This is over an article about orcs. This is insane. Yeah, essentially. Everyone's like, what? Orcs? <laughs> yes, we're still talking orcs. Yeah, I, I still can't believe a bunch of retards on Twitter are, are complaining about a fictional species in the fantasy genre of literature. Fantastic. <laughs> Ask yourself, who looks like the rational person in this conversation? Assuming this isn't a troll. Yeah, we have no idea. One person even called for Ferguson to delete the article in Psychology Today, of course, delete his comments about the subject on Twitter, and consider that maybe as a white man, you're not qualified to write about race in any capacity. So here we go. Someone is accusing someone of not having the authority or the right mind think because their skin tone. Who do you think the racist is there accusing someone of race? Like it's just, it's so utterly ironic and bizarre that these people say the words out of their mouths and write them down. Hey, you're being dragged pretty hard on left Twitter right now. Yeah, that's a good thing. If anyone's accusing you of doing something on the left, you're doing something right. Ha 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 ha. Whatever the crazy on the left are saying, it's like, yep, I'm doing the right thing. They're the good check mark. It's like, all right, they are the ones to tell you when you're doing something wrong, when really, in fact, you're doing the right thing. That's that's a good benchmark. Delete this thread, delete the whole article you wrote. Consider that maybe as a, yeah, okay. Responded to a number of texts. He first responded to Brandon Leon Gambetta after sharing the article on Twitter. He wrote, and we have the inevitable reply, which goes straight to the ad hominem. Essentially, the argument is that I raise concerns in other articles that are not consistent with the ideology. Wow, he's using logic. This is exactly my concern with the thought rigidity of wokeness. Yes, the, the temple of wokeness. There's only one way to think, and it's my way, which changes between everyone else who's also woke because they don't understand how this thing called logic works or, or fantasy works or reality works. They're in their own little world and they can't seem to connect it with the rest of the universe, <laughs> like the universe of fiction. So apparently a dude at me on his ad hominem attacks, then I responded pointing out they are ad hominem, blocked me. Nice. This is the way these folks operate. Well, fantastic. The doctor got one of those, those geniuses to block him so he doesn't have to worry about what they have to say anymore. I think that's a job well done. And he keeps going. So it looks like some dude got unhinged because I published something that conflicts with his personal views. To be clear, I am interested in good data, even on controversial topics, as I am. I liked I like the information. I like stats. I like to know what's what. I do not advocate for Gamergate, spanking, or hard to believe this needs to be said, slavery. Exactly. Because he's not an insane person like the people on the left seem to be. He continued. It's exactly... This kind of behavior we need to stand up against, whatever our personal beliefs. These individuals resort to slander and bullying in support of their ideological beliefs, which is ridiculous. All you you hear from these people are insane words spoken over and over again, sometimes screamed over and over again. No backing, no understanding, no data, just their own opinions. As if mob rule is a good thing, as if unintelligence or unknowledge or anti-knowledge is the way to argue. 
And once again, the woke goes straight to slavery apologist, which again, not a thing, rather than any serious engagement. It's this kind of nonsense bad behavior with its own radicalized, over, racialized overtones that has done progressive, progressivism so much damage. I don't think anyone wants to be associated with progressivism these days. There's nothing wrong with saying I'm a leftist or I believe in left-leaning principles or uh, certain controls or, or bills to be passed by the state or the municipal level or the federal level. Sure, you have these opinions. That's great. It's when you're called a progressivist, when you have radical ideas, not founded in science, not founded in reality, and you attack things like media, like fictional media, that makes no sense. He would then address the overall criticism he was receiving. The difficulty over orcs revealed the trouble that the far left or some thereof have in framing any kind of dialogue as any disagreement being any other than white supremacy. Or pick pick any ism, pick any phobic term. That's what they want to, they want to demonize an idea. They want to say, this is a horrible, disgusting thing because we said so when there's no reason to believe that. There's no, there's no evidence, there's no results of people reading these books or playing these games, turning into racists or slaveries, slaver, slavers, owning slaves. It's just the most ridiculous crap. Smear tactics from an individual for whom critique of his personal views appears to be highly threatening. And all, and all Chris did was make a post on Psychology Today. Fantasy fiction has been under siege for the last few years with the depiction of orcs being one of the many points of contention. I've never heard of this until recently. I've, I've, fantasy fiction is gigantic, okay? There's all kinds of writers out there and they've been flourishing for, geez, at least since Tolkien came out with Lord of the Rings. It is not going away. People love fiction of all sorts. Fantasy is just one of those genres that people just attach their imaginations to and go crazy with. And there's all sorts of fantasy. There's dark fantasy. There's high adventure fantasy. There's high, high fantasy, if you want to call it. All kinds of, of science fantasy. So, you know, if you love that genre, anyone reading these comments are like, this is insane. These are crazy people. They use orcs to go after fantasy greats like Tolkien, claiming they're promoting racism of their depiction or their depiction is racist. You know, maybe there is a, a great... Uh, passage in some of Tolkien's works showing that, yeah, maybe the orcs are racist or they are uh, based off racial feelings. And even then I would say that is a good thing. You want to get these elements in stories. It is much better to talk about them in a fictional context than to address them in some real world identity where you start attacking people for thinking improperly. So fired Marvel Comics and Star Wars author Chuck Wendig declared the entire genre of epic fantasy was too white and male and straight. Insinuating that the genre needs to have self-imposed diversity quotas. Well, Chuck Wendig is rather hilarious. And I'm glad that he's part of this article just because it's always fun to end on a Chuck Wendig comment of... An entire fantasy genre being too something and, and masculine and heterosexual. Gosh darn it. What what is what are fantasy writers going to do? Well, hopefully they'll keep writing awesome stories and people will keep reading them because that's exactly what every writer should do anyway. But this has always been a, a silly commentary for me. I, I don't see the problem with talking about Species, whether it's vampires or orcs or ghosts or elves or dwarves, you know, you pick the, the, the fantasy element you like, you read about it, and you leave your opinion on that author's Amazon page or wherever they're selling their books. Keep reading, guys. Keep enjoying. Keep hating and loving what you love and hate. I mean, why not? Free country and all. But have some reason behind your argument when you make that commentary because, oh boy, you're going to look like an ass when you're on the progressive left. But thanks for listening and have yourself a great morning.